Cool. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the Nevermind Poly podcast. My name is Matt. I'm your host, and we chat to rock and metal bands from around the world. And it's my absolute pleasure to bring you this interview with the excellent tribe of ghosts. I've got Becky and I've got Adam online. How are you doing both? How's, how's things? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, doing all good. Doing all good. How about yourself? I, I'm very well. I've finished a day at work, which was way too stressful for it should be on a Wednesday. But uh, apart from that, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I've since I've since come home and decompressed. So that's good. Yes. But uh, yeah, it's, it's all good. Um, there is so much to talk about with your band, because firstly, I've watched the rise of your band uh, for a long time, and I'm very, very happy to, in, in your rise to success, and I'm very, very thrilled to have you both on. So my first kind of question is, the year 2023 kind of summed up. How, how has it been for you both individually as a band? Because from what I've seen through social media posts and things, it's been a bit of a hell of a ride, right? How's it all been? That's a very fair statement. It has yeah. been. He just gave me the right. biggest, like the <laughs> widest eyed look you've ever seen. Just like. <laughs> I mean, because I think for this year, I mean, as a band and musically, there's been so many milestones for us. Mm. And I think um, personally as well, as individuals, there's been so much happening for us. It's been huge this year um, along with it. So everything's just been incredibly wonderfully overwhelming yeah. all at the same time really and right, it's been like yeah it's yeah like just to even echo becky's echo becky it's it's for all four of us it's been a bit of a mental year to say the least and uh, all the stuff of the band has has gone from oh this is this is really cool this is really exciting into like what is happening yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's mad it's utterly mental and that's the thing as well there's been so many moments this year and you, i think it's just something that i've kind of seen because social media can become like a bit of an echo chamber right and you make mm. your own echo chamber good or bad hence why i don't have twitter slash x whatever that is that yeah i don't need that kind of stuff in my life but what i have seen is a lot of positivity and i've just seen like a lot of people who i kind of know on like the fringes of, of kind of knowing someone if that makes sense all the way down to like very like close friends just going out there and smashing it and i just fucking love that and like i've seen i've seen you guys and obviously we've never met and things but i've just kind of seen your social media stuff and i'm like yeah go on guys you fucking deserve Thank this you. you know it's been really really cool and, and i've absolutely loved seeing you guys growing things so i i kind of for those of people who don't know who tribes of ghosts are and aren't on the tribe of ghosts train yet can you kind of sum up kind of the band in, in a sentence in a few words in, in your own words because i don't like to put bands in boxes i feel like it's much better if i just go you define yourselves how would you define yourself if you can well we've got the sentence <laughs> go, go on hit me with the sentence so the sentence is um dystopian music for a totalitarian world um it's something that adam kind of coined um when oh when was it, it must have been 2022 um mm. when we kind of re um relaunched everything as like a four piece and rearranged mm. everything and stuff like that um we don't like to put ourselves in a box at all mm. and it's so hard to define genre and mm. every time every interview we say something nearly say something completely different <laughs> it's, it kind of evolves over time of what we are mm. like kind of what was it? We kind of sort of talk. We took. We say we're industrial post metal, but then there's like, oh, we're sludge pop. Oh, yeah. we're post sludge. Or like, yeah. But, but, yeah, I don't even know. Like, industrial hyper pop and like, like ambient industrial. Like, yeah, it it starts at one place, ends at another, and we've got no idea where it goes in between. I love that, and you know what? I I think. It's, this is going to sound um i, I want to like immediately like take us down a rabbit hole here right but unless you're working in like the very very like basic like record shops so i'm talking like hmv i'm not slagging them off just if you work somewhere like that you have to categorize things by certain genre otherwise it's just a mess mm -hmm. right so you've got like rock and pop and you've got metal and then like you've got two albums that are next to each other that sound so fucking different and that is the only time when genre really needs to be addressed at least i feel like because again mm -hmm. like if, you, if you're going and picking up a david bowie album and you're picking up 
I don't know, fucking some death metal record. It's kind of those two things probably should be in different camps for, for obvious reasons. Do you know what I mean? But when it comes to just yeah. like accessing music as as a person these days, like Spotify, Apple Music, it's so accessible. Like it's kind of great because although uh, I mean for myself, I've turned thirty. I'll be thirty one in March, right? I've lived through having to buy CDs and buying some fucking terrible records and having to forcing myself to like them. Right. So now I'm kind of like, I'm envious of people who are first getting into music. Cause they're like, Oh, we can just have access to everything. And it's like, well, hang on a minute. That's not fair. Like I literally had to spend so much money on terrible fucking records and like force myself I, to like them. You know, I, I genuinely just, <laughs> that just absolutely brought back a core memory of when I was like, I bought sure. Diamond, I bought Diamond Eyes by Deftones. Right, I was like, God. this is the like when it first came out. I was like, this is the best album ever. And at yeah. the same time, I also bought an album by Medina Lake, which was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I was, God. I had like one of the greatest albums ever, <laughs> and then Medina Lake. <laughs> I was, I was like, just, when I got, I was, I was like, I justify buying this. So like, House of Cards is a good song. <laughs> You know what? I I'm gonna lose all my credibility and say I was a Medina Lake fan back in the day. I was and, I was back in the day, but now yeah. I hear it was like oh oh that yeah. was a poor decision young me made. <laughs> I love that. I love that. But you know what? It's it's one of those things. Like I and that I think is a good thing to be fair because there there is a lack of there's no shame now because the only person you can see your Apple or Spotify or in, insert big brand here who, who did distribute music. It's like only you can see your own search history. Like, and there is no such thing as a guilty pleasure. But back in the day, if you're like you say, you you were in town and like you went to HMV or wherever and you picked up an album, you go, Oh, this is great. And they're like, Oh, what have you bought from there? And it's like, I didn't just buy the Medina like C D. I'm really like, I was this for my brother or for my sister. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> There's no shame in it anymore. And I love that. Um, so it kind of brings me on quite nicely. When you guys are on tour and when you're like in the van or, or just together as, as people, what are you kind of listening to? What does kind of, because again, you're very hard to define a uh, band in terms of genre. So what are you guys like listening to? And do you have any kind of things that might be uh, quote unquote out of left field and kind of gone, huh, I wouldn't expect that band to play that music to listen to that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, Bex and I today were even talking about uh, Slater. So we mm -hmm. were talking about Slater because she's iconic. Um, we listen to heavy, like we listen to a load of heavy stuff in the van. Like hardcore is yeah. a big one for us. Like Kubla Khan, Not Loose, yeah, and that kind of stuff. But um, we, we do have uh, the, the greatest car playlist in the world, though, and the greatest okay. gig playlist in the world that we would put on. I'll leave yeah. it with you because I'll let you go into that. All righty. <laughs> so um, we do have this place that we always go to because Danny is the driver of our van yeah. he kind of gets to choose the playlists and stuff it's to his mm -hmm. taste but we it has and we also we listen to super heavy stuff he has he likes to put on like 80s hair metal as well but the one we always come right. back to which we always try and persuade promoters and engineers to put on between before our set yeah. and <laughs> it's something that we actually made for one of our first headline shows that we put on in brighton yeah um, later part of last year and um, it's called Powerful Women, but right. spelled P A A A A A A A A A U L Women and N B yeah. Babes. Um, right. And um, it's full of ridiculously aggy, sugary sweet hyper pop. Yeah. And like really heavy, like hardcore and all sorts but all from um female and non-binary artists um, Amazing. so we've got like a whole mix of like charlie xcx slater bambi thug harriet um who else Amazing. um ithaca well, ithaca but at the same time we also stretch it into uh the 2000s pop absolutely so we've got khalees we've got milkshake by khalees amazing yeah we headlined in cambridge last year and just before we went on, the I showed, I said to the sound engineer, whilst there was someone else, oh, can you pop, pop on this playlist? He yeah. saw the first track, turned to me and just went, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Khalees. So yeah. it started, he pressed play, it started going. And the promoter comes up and goes, oh, I have no idea who the hell put this on. And was like, oh, it's, 
<laughs> yeah. and loads of metal heads that are like there are loads of metal heads that are literally like just grooving and dancing and like yeah. twerking. It was it was amazing. And then we hit our first note and they were like, what is happening? Yeah. I mean that that's the best thing. It's uh it's lowering people into a false sense of security. Mm. It's kind of like uh because the, the best part of that 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 uh, thought process, I guess is if you've got some, and I, I hate this word, but quote unquote normal people who don't listen to the kind of music you guys play and they've just gone because their friend wants them to go or, or whatever and they've kind of like coaxed them in. I'm like, oh, Khalees for Milkshake, this is a good song. And like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, this is a cool vibe. And then you guys come out and like, what the what fuck the is happening? Is <laughs> I love that. It's the best. Oh, it's so fun. It's so fun awesome stuff so I, I wanted to talk as well because the fact that 2023 has been such a big year for you guys as a band you've released a couple of singles and things so this year but i wanted to kind of start with return to bloodstock festival because like i don't want to say this is the crowning moment but it felt like because again a crowning moment means it's like the peak and it's never going to get better but it felt like a real moment for you guys as a band how was that what was like the performance like? What were you like before, after? Talk me through that whole experience. It was a blur. <laughs> that's, all I can, that's all I have to say. There was so much happening, so many different emotions. We were having so much fun, but we mm. were also um, battling some sound issues on stage as well. For sure. So, um, but it's only now in ears, though. So we have a separate mm. system for those who kind of don't... Um, for those non-musos who or musos that yeah own for sure that kind of systems we have a separate inner system so it splits half it goes to the front of the stage dealt with our major engineer sophie the other half is with us and is yeah. on us and yeah. <laughs> a couple of things went a little wrong not too wrong fortunately um but it was we just kind of had to you, sort of dig our heels in into the moment as much mm -hmm. as we could um and it's one of those things that no gig can ever go like perfect internally for you and yeah, of course um but the the, the just it's even hard like i always find it hard with shows to really like digest what's actually happening because it feels yeah, like of course. the experience so yeah. when i talk about shows and people are, how did you feel i'm like i don't know yeah i don't I, know i i, I, I guess Again, I, I've never been in a band. I've never been on stage with like. Yeah. But I get. I, I guess it must be kind of one of those things where like it's such a rush of adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And again, you're you're locked in with you know your friends and your bandmates, mm -hmm. and also you're kind of muscle memorying all the things that you've done hundreds of times in rehearsal, and then you're trying to like give it all to the crowd, and then you're watching what's happening in the crowd and going, "Fucking hell, this is happening right now!" And you're trying like it, it's just so many. So I totally get it. You kind of get that brain fog of going what the fuck just happened <laughs> like, i totally get that like <laughs> with all the fears and all the emotions at the same time mm. and i felt like my mind was just a pinball machine like a pinball yeah. machine like, duh, 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 like yeah but and now I, I still don't know how to feel about it i feel like i would digest it and go this is really sunk in now yeah, yeah. But no no but it's like this thing like, like i we we performed in front of what we we think it must be like six thousand people like yeah, yeah and i just don't know i feel like adam has a better idea adam was having a, was bouncing around <laughs> like a spaniel so for me it was a really important one because my uh i've played i have played on that stage before but that was in a mm. previous band and i was battling with a lot of very very severe mental health issues at that point and for me being able to come back and play and be in such a such a better mindset and to be playing the music that I really wanted to play and and to be able to spend that time with with like the best with the best friends in the world like yeah I get that I get to absolutely fuck around with Bex Ben and Danny and we and yeah. it's like it, it's the you know we call it our tribe fam because it is we're a little family and it's the best thing yeah and uh enjoying like it very much was one of those like those enjoying the moment thing i was very aware of all the monitor issues so i was also trying to periodically run over and try and fix it and work out what's happening yeah but um one thing i am proud of for myself at least is that at no point until the very last note of the set 
did I throw my guitar at anything? So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, if you've seen a tribe show, mm. um, that is a rarity. <laughs> <laughs> and you stayed on stage. And I stayed on stage. Rarity. That's another thing. It was yeah, it was a it was it was very that was a very rare thing for me to be on stage and for my guitar to be thrown at the last note. <laughs> um yeah, uh our long our long-standing engineer is uh, a long-standing technician, sorry, Lewis, yeah. uh is basically holding my uh has basically got my guitar held together at the moment with duct tape and wishes. <laughs> so um yeah, that's kind of the thing. <laughs> I guess as I much as we that. talk about like the whirlwind of it all, it is definitely a, been a monumental moment, and mm. like it's just I think it's just to the point of almost like overwhelming to think that there's people out there who really vouch for us like that. Like we're so thankful, yeah. like to Simon for having us on, mm. and I'm like the the response and support is like to the point of little old us. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So sometimes it's quite hard to fathom, but then we have worked our asses off and we just love it full force. And I think we throw it so much of ourselves into every single show that we do. Mm. It was as much as it was the biggest show we've done and we had thought about every single detail. It's kind of business as usual for us, which is yeah. let's just go out there and be the best mm -hmm. that we are for this music and just yeah. throw ourselves sonically and physically at people. So our yeah. sets. Our sets are just cathartic chaos permanently. So um <laughs> when you know Bex and I were joking about it at the weekend, it's like uh, like sometimes I'm launching myself off the stage, I'm laying on my back, guitar up in the air, Bex comes over is like licking my guitar. Like <laughs> I like I we played in Southampton, I was rubbing my face on the stage floor. And yeah. Bex I get up and it's just a smear of dirt over my face. So Bex is just like whilst singing and I'm playing just like trying to wipe this crap off my face <laughs> the players you didn't know so you just thought I was being I very no and endearing and then I was like I sent you like one of the gig photos where it just looks like a hoops on your forehead and I'm oh. like this is why I was doing this <laughs> I was so good like Ben and it's like Ben's throwing himself around with his bass Danny's drum kit he's got to get like sandbags on the cymbals sands yeah not to, not because like, oh we know I want to keep him in place it's because he's hitting him so hard when he's playing with us that they start <laughs> moving away from him so it's like he, us our shows are just chaos i mean that that's that's the best thing i i always think that if you're if you're literally or figuratively bleeding for your art then you're doing it right like oh, i smash sounds... myself in the face of my guitar <laughs> during that. yeah yeah, <laughs> you know, and and I mean that in in the best possible way. If if you're if you're harming yourself on purpose, like that's not okay. But just if you're like let's say figurative or metaphorically like bleeding for your fat, yeah, that's the best. I fucking love it. It's, it shows that you're really into it, which is which is important. Mm. Uh, and also, I wanted to to touch upon the fact that like where you guys are from as a band in Brighton is is that right? Have I got that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's such a kind of a hotbed for creative people, for like interesting uh, bands and artists and creative types. What is the scene like in 2023 in Brighton as, as we sit and record today? It's, I can, it's, it's so weird to try and, you can't pigeonhole it. It's so fluid. Yeah, it's so sure. fluid And it's built from, it's built from such this DIY ethic of, we uh, DIY ethic of, of just kind of we want to sound the way that we want to sound Absolutely. and you know, you, you've got bands like crow god and knife bride and and vayman and and all hell dog and all these all these bands yeah. that you can it's like helvexia every there's so many bands in brighton that at, at no point can you then say to them like Oh yeah, no. You sound like that band. You sound like that band. You sound like that band. It's like they're all just their own little microcosm of sound, and it's amazing. It's amazing to see. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've I've I'm never been to Brighton, but I'd love to go because I understand your record shop collection is extensive, and I'm resident. Big... Resident is 
awesome. <laughs> I mean, if I went to Brighton for record shopping, my other half would not marry me. I mean, we're getting married in July, but I've got to do a post the marriage of why she's going to just leave me because <laughs> I'm a fiend for collecting vinyl. So, but yeah, <laughs> that's pretty um, well. All, the only things I know of Brighton is it's got a fantastic beach, fantastic bands, and fantastic record stores, from what I understand. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. Um, I wanted to touch on where, and this is a question I've asked a lot of bands in 2023. And it's always kind of got a good response. So I'm hope, I'm hoping, I'm holding out hope for you guys, right? Where is the weirdest or the strangest place you've ever played a show? Now, before I before you go mad into your brain cortex and think about that, it doesn't have to be negative. Because that's the first thing I mean, think most people go, oh, we played to like, I don't know, like half a dozen people and it was shit. It can just be... Like where you've you've arrived at a venue and you've all sort of looked around each other and go, how the fuck? What the fuck are we doing here? Like, <laughs> how has I, this happened? <laughs> I already have my answer. It might be the okay. same as Bex's. For sure. Um, this is and this isn't one that's like, how do we end up here? We know exactly yeah. how we ended up here, <laughs> and uh, that was when we played at Ribka in Brighton. Okay, I'm not. You have to talk me through what what was Ribka. Talk me through it. Ribka's a fish and chip shop. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, we okay, played. Amazing. We played above. Uh, we played at Ribka above the fish and chip shop for the Great Escape. Amazing. Uh, well, it was, it was Great Escape. It was during. It was during it. It was a show that, like, we would put it on. It was. It was our own little showcase that we put on. Yeah. Uh, with Belmondo, Pabst, and uh, our lovely, our lovely fam and Fakey Death. These Fakey lovely Death, humans amazing. were also incredible. You need to see them. They're amazing. Amazing. Um, but we were uh, spending time with them. And uh, we basically turned this fish and chip, chip shop venue into this fish and chip shop into the most mental venue. Yeah. Uh, and it was just, it was so good. It was so, so fun. But uh, in Bex's words, what, what do you say? It was it's like changing rooms and... It was uh, um it was a um, Mission Impossible meets changing rooms. So <laughs> this room above the shop, it was um so what it, it wasn't like we we're playing next to the counter and they were like mm. had, like better See, see, see that that's that's where my yeah, brain went to like <laughs> well, the kitchen for it was a, we were above the kitchen. Yeah, so sure. so yeah, we were just above the kitchen, but it was like this completely kind of bare room. Yeah. And we had a snippet of time on the day. We got in and we had to Completely set up the PA, the kit, and everything. There was nothing um, there really, yeah. and we had. So we were able to get in at about five. Yeah, we for sure. Had about maybe an hour and forty-five minutes to set up the PA, set up the drums, completely build everything. We also had like a backdrop we'd taken with us, and mm -hmm. just to jazz it up a little bit to sound check all the bands. Adam was engineering for all the other bands apart from us, where we had yeah. um, we got our engineer, our dear Sophie, to come in and help us for that. Yeah. And we just had to, and the, the bear in mind this stage, it wasn't just like a little stairs, it was like three flights of narrow stairs. Yeah, the worst. Harry, <laughs> PA kit stands, complete drum kit, all yeah. <laughs> these stairs. And it was in the lanes. I don't know if you've ever been to the South Lanes. I haven't, no. I've never no been so Brian, basically yeah. where it is, it's tucked away in really narrow path. So you're, yeah. and we had to have the van like hazards on loading from the side. So we're carrying this like a couple of minutes past narrow lanes, up yeah. three flights of stairs and having to do that trip at probably at least 10 times. Yeah. Set the kit up, everything, sound check all the bands and... <laughs> <laughs> did you say about the backdrop as well yes i was saying we had to put the backdrop up and and you just, just like everything and anything that kind of could have kind of happened you had to problem solve did and we just made it work in somehow in like an hour and 45 minutes nice it was insane it was so i mean mad. <laughs> i mean that's that's the thing as well when because I think there is a, a almost like a danger, I guess, from the, the people who just listen to and consume music to think that being in a band is all fun and games because of the likes of social media and things like that, the way that bands are portrayed. It, it is it is a lot of hard graft that goes into it. So I, I guess how how do you find it as a DIY band from from like, like you say putting on your own shows and things like that and 
literally having to lug you know gear and everything else like which i know a lot of bands do but how, how do you kind of find that all personally for you guys because i guess it must put a kind of like a strain on things uh, sometimes you just think you just think oh I bloody just uh, and then you get you, after the event you're like actually you know what you're all right you you're all right <laughs> <laughs> but at, at the time it's kind of like i want to fucking strangle you do you know I what i mean it, <laughs> i think it is all part of the fun um hmm, for sure and- like, I kind of wouldn't at this stage in the, in sort of where we are with the band, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's just so much fun. It is laugh a minute, even with all mm. the weird stuff that happens. Um, like what we try and do a lot as much as we can. We have our good mate L who comes and shoots. Um, she takes most of us, but also has they have something called Dad Cam. Right. And, okay. Cool. And, uh, nice. It's and we have quite a few reels on our socials, and they have it on theirs as well. Yeah. And, um. And we just have all these little reels of all these behind the scenes of what goes on in in between our shows. So they film mm-hmm. little bits of the set as well, but they're mainly yes. it's just full of us chatting absolute shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> just being so stupid. And that yeah. is almost like, it is half of the fun as well as getting mm-hmm. on stage and stuff. Like I yeah. think Adam said earlier, we are like a little family. And I think because we enjoy each other's company so much, it's just, it's just like, I can't wait to just have a gas and just be really, really stupid with you. Oh, and then we're going to play a gig. That's great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Genuinely. Like, it, it is that, like, Beck's got it nailed. It's gigs as well as, you know, it's that, it's that other thing as well of when we do gigs and stuff like that. It's never a case of going, oh, we'll meet you there. Yeah, we're always yeah, be like, okay, cool. We'll go from one place. We're all going to spend some time. Shall we get there early and actually have, like, let's go get some food together. Let's spend some time. And we, like, we, as much as we're, like, doing it, absolute chaos whilst we're there it's like no no this is a family day so we're going to have like family yeah. time whilst we're doing stuff I love so that. even like even when we went to bloodstock um when we played there we made sure we were there on the thursday and yeah. made sure we we're there on the friday not because we're like okay but no we've got to we've got to work we've got to work we were working but on the thursday yeah. we, we all really wanted to go see um skinned so yeah. we all had a family night watching skinned and it was all like having dinner together and having drinks and really enjoying time with each other. Next day, we're all watching Bosk and having family day, uh, having a family day watching Bosk. And oh. it's, yeah, it's it's never it's never one of those things of like I don't want to you know I don't want to spend time with these. I don't, I only want to spend time with with Beck, Ben, and Danny when it's a gig. It's no no. I want to yeah. spend time with them all the time. I love them. It's just like it's the greatest moment ever. And you it's know just what? Really as a gig attached. <laughs> I, I think more bands should refer to like the band as, as family time. I love that. That's so that's so like it warms my heart. It really does. I love that. Um and that's the thing as well. There is like there is so much like just kind of love and admiration amongst just the pair of you and obviously the rest of the band. And there's so much love projected towards you guys as a band. So I kind of want to ask what is ahead in 2020 for the rest of 2023 into 2024 we can talk about if any i mean they're all looking very suspicious i mean if you watch this on youtube they've both pulled a face at me as if to say we can't tell you fucking anything so much that we can't talk about we're like on the cusp of it i know 2023 isn't that much left of 2023 she's like come on it's not that far we look that's some but there's some very exciting stuff that we can't talk about however something Mm. we can talk about is because we put it on all our socials was yeah, that nice. we dropped the music video back in August. Amazing. And it was a two-day wild ride. Yeah, amazing. I was not like anything involving it. Standard, standard, wild ride anyway. Absolutely <laughs> bonkers. Uh, won't go into too much detail because I don't want to give too much away. Yeah, uh, for sure. But we we actually managed to get a first cut um, like two or three weeks back and yeah. it absolutely blew our minds. Um, nice. And we are hoping to have a final cut very, very soon. And we'll be, we've also been, we have been in the studio this year. Amazing. Nice. And um, we are in the process of signing some bits and bobs off for it. Exciting. Nice. nice. Once once everything's together in one lovely little pile, we'll be getting everything into a row and being able to release some stuff. Yeah, no. that, I mean yeah. that 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 is that is uh, as vague yet as not vague as possible. I love it, like because that's very much like. We can't say exact dates and things yet. Yeah, of um, course. But 
we're very, very, very excited. The future is looking bright, which is absolutely. There's one. Job. There's also one thing that we, for certain, can absolutely talk about, which is that in November we're playing Rabbit Fest. Yeah, nice. We're playing Rabbit nice. Fest uh, with Cage Fights and with Bound Amazing. and Fear. We need to get Ben to come and do the guest spot. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you need to get come to the guest spot on some banner. Um, Rabbit Fest is going to be an absolute mad one. I'm well excited for that. Absolutely. I love that. So speaking of uh, festivals, this is a beautiful segue from me personally. I'm just going to throw it out there. I would like to write. So this is a part of the show because we're getting towards the end of the show. And I am so appreciative of your time today, guys. Um, and this is a part of the show. So basically you got to kind of go with me a little bit, right? So when Apple or Spotify or insert big fucking corporate brand here buys this podcast, right? I'm going to have lots of uh, podcast money to spend, right? So what I'm going to do with podcast money, rather than invest it back in microphones and fucking faders and all this other bullshit, I'm going to just basically make a festival, right? And Tribe of Ghosts are invited to play along with all the other bands that, that have been on the podcast. It's going to be a very long, eclectic bill, but it will all be fine, right? But because we've got lots of lovely sponsor money, uh, we're going to put it in the biggest possible field we can get our hands on, right? Which leaves me with a question. Because you're invited, because you're my guests of the show and of the festival, I'd like to know, what would you like to add to the rider of said festival? Now, there's two things to bear in mind. We've got that lovely corporate sponsor money. So money is not an object. We ain't got to worry about that. And it's mm -hmm. in the biggest field that we can get our hands on. So space and logistics ain't a problem either. So what I'd like to know is what you'd like to add. So I'll give you a little bit of context, right? So I had a few people. I've had uh, Andy from therapy. He said to me, I just want like socks, towels, water, really bare basic stuff, right? And I'm, I respect that. All the way to Matt from the drummer of August Bands Red, who said to me, I want a full monster truck rally and all American style like fucking setup with like 20 monster trucks and all this kind of stuff, right? Which again, way too extra, but I appreciate it. Like, you know, I asked the question, he gave me the answer. All the way down to the most niche thing of like, I want this bottle of red wine that they make 50 of in this one region of France, for example. What would you like to add? I want a petting and zoo. You, Ah, straight off the bat, straight in. With I the always zoo. get as much as I love shows, but like I push around with Bloodstock as well because, like, when they're big shows, it's like mm. I get a lot of nervous energy. Like, mm -hmm. I'm always like, Becky, how are you feeling? I go, Nothing. I feel nothing. <laughs> and it's just, I'm in the void. And uh, it's like we're having a hug. We're having a hug beforehand. Like, Bloodstock, we're having a hug beforehand. I'm just like, You're doing okay? And she's like, mm, mm. Yeah. Like, you're, you're fine. You've got <laughs> yeah. this. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I, I, I love animals so much, and they calm me down. So I thought nice. what's the perfect thing to have backstage is a rider. Is like a really nice petting zoo, but like full of like, like lots of like cute doggos and nice. like goats nice. and things and all the like all the nice animals. And you just like you stroke them and you just sit with them, and it'd be the most loveliest, calming thing before you go on stage. Like couldn't think of anything better. I mean, I'm going to have to make a caveat that all the black metal bands are banned from going anywhere near it. I'm sorry. It's yeah, a really poor that's... taste joke, but I make it every <laughs> time. And it's still... Leave the like... goats alone! <laughs> Literally. Leave the goats alone. <laughs> How about you, Adam? <laughs> so, I'm in two minds of mine. Ah, see, he, he's... Well. he's I, I love... Becky, no disrespect, but you've gone straight for the first thing. He's, he's, he's a man who's, like, thought about it. He's, like... He's took it all in, like... You've just gone... No, so one immediately goes. came... So one immediately came to mind. Go on. And then the other one... This one came through whilst Becky was talking as well about about relaxation. Um, number one is... <laughs> You're so worried what you're going to say now. <laughs> uh, number one is a, is a laser maze arena. Okay, uh, amazing. Nice. So nice. just... Just thought of it. I was like, hell yes. Uh, yes and the yes. other one is basically mm -hmm. a little area to be able to just build Lego. You know, so I don't know. This is a reflection on me rather than you. My mind went 
you were going to say to jerk off. And I don't know why my mind no, went there. No, 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 when no, you, no. When you start talking about relaxation, my mind, into, I don't know why my mind went there. And then it's just the way you like so slowly said it. I was like, where are we going? With this? You went no, no, just literally Lego, Lego, okay. all about building just something. If I can go and build like a scale model of yeah. the Leaning Tower of Pisa yeah, for amazing. like two hours before our set, just to be like, I don't really care about something going wrong because I'm just building a tower. This yeah. is fun. And just do that, I would, you know what? I would be in heaven. I, I actually, so my my boss, uh, shout out Joe, with the part I work at, he um he loves building Lego. He's like big into it. And I've kind of was like, oh, okay, Lego's cool. And he's like, oh my God, look at this like fucking like Star Wars base thing. That's so cool. I was like, oh, cool. How much is that? That's pretty cool. Like Lego is extortionate. <laughs> It's yep. absolutely obscene how expensive Lego is. So I was like, "What the fuck?" There's a there's a friend of mine. I love a friend it, of mine it's cool, who, man. Oh, it's so good. There's a friend of mine who's uh, for his birthday was bought the Lego Death Star. Amazing. Um, but uh, they've just had uh, they've they've uh, they've got their little boy. Yeah. But they only just got their little boy. So when that happened, it was like I can't build this death star because if boy breaks it that's it it's ruined so yeah, yeah. Like, he's basically now got this lego death star that he can't touch <laughs> until the lad's like 10 years old <laughs> i mean yeah I, I i respect the level of like um discipline. discipline that's the word i was trying to think of the word like that is some serious level discipline but also, like the amount of anxiety-inducing stuff that, would, like, if he built it and then just left it with a toddler around it, pff, yeah, that's absolutely mad. No. I was bad. I don't have a child, but I have a cat who likes to get on top of all this stuff, and it's like, please don't touch my things. They're very expensive. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like dread, dread to think well, having a kid running around would be like, oh, crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> Honestly, I do. For, I I paint like forty k miniatures, and all of and yeah. my miniatures that I paint are like. I look after them delicately. I really enjoy yeah. painting my look after. I look yeah. after tiny block little bits of plastic yeah. more than I do my guitars. Yeah. Fair. The things Fair. I need for us to be able to make noises, I throw <laughs> at people. This I'm like, no, it has to be like really nicely looked after. I've painted this. <laughs> I've, I've put this together and it's got and it's got small little moving parts. My guitar. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I, I guess that, I mean, uh, Becky, I'm not sure that was a disdain in your face when you're talking about the guitar being thrown <laughs> or, or just general joy of like, that's just Adam. Like, <laughs> He's a bit of both. He's a... <laughs> I was thinking the first time I, so I was just slowly, when, when we first started off doing this stuff, when it was like, uh, when we did like our first bunch of live shows, I was just, we were just kind of getting used to what we were and kind of working out what we were live. And then when we did Bloodstock last year and did the new Blood stage last year, that's the first time I threw my guitar at the end of the set because I was just so excited that it happened. Yeah. And it's a, yeah. the most um, memeable like video yeah. comes out of that where Bex has got this epic pose of like fist up in the air, head back. Yeah. I've launched my guitar. No one hit, no one knows until yeah. it just slams on the floor with a massive just... <laughs> and Bex goes... What the f <laughs> just like literally just turns <laughs> looks at it and it's it oh my funny. god it is the most disappointed look becky's ever given me <laughs> i love it i absolutely love it um so I, i'm gonna start to wrap things up and as i say thank you so much for your time uh guys it's been a fucking awesome it's been so worth the wait because we've been trying to get this down for for a minute and it's been worth no, it 100 percent um, so my, my final question is a question I've asked every single artist who's been gracious enough to give me their time in, in the last three years to this podcast. And that is simply, what is the best thing about being a musician for you guys personally? Nice little somber one for you to end the show. <laughs> I think for me, it's family and community. Mm -hmm. um, like... I'm like I'm quite a question old lady now, and um, and I've been like I've been doing music for quite a while, but I never really had the drive to do it on my own. Like yeah. I think part of me is like, yeah, I I could do, but there wasn't any drive or energy for to to do it just for myself for my own ego. Yeah. When 
when I joined Tribe of Ghosts, like having the family, the community, the scene to collaborate and do it together meant everything to me. And that's kind of what keeps me going. And that's what gives me the drive. Like it is so much work. And when you're at this point, when you're underground, we've all got day jobs. We're doing this. It's a, it's like a you're kind of just working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. And it's there would be no way I could do it if I didn't do it for that. So that's absolutely. I think I think that's as well. It's something that I get asked quite a lot during the podcast and stuff is is my the biggest my biggest bugbear and I totally understand why people ask it is do you get paid for doing it right and it's like no I don't get paid fucking shit but why the reason I do it because of it yeah I literally hemorrhaging money but the reason why I do it <laughs> is to have conversations like this but also I'm putting something positive into the world or at least it's come from a positive place and I think that's the one thing that I kind of look at when like you've got bands who work you know seven seven days a week 24 hours and, and put all their heart money blood and soul into it it's like you're doing it for the right reasons and you've got people who do literally nothing posting shit on social media and trying to bring people down it's like what are you doing with your like these guys are trying to actually just project something good into the world you know so yeah keep mm -hmm. keep doing what you're doing basically is, is what i want to say adam do you have anything to add and, and what's your what's your final thing it's honestly it is like Bex nailed it on that one, a family and community, and it's being able to do that. But I think it's, and it's only really become a realization for me personally, at least, in the since it was well, in the last like two years. And yeah. I think it's, and it comes from that family and community of, and I think it, it in all honesty, it comes from, uh, it comes from you, Bex. Definitely comes from you, Aww, Bex. Cute. Love that. Nice. The, the oh, Babs. You know, yes. I love you. Um, it's <laughs> it's basically it's basically come from Bex, like the little sister I've uh, the little sister. Oh, I've got wonderful little sisters. Bex is the little sister I've never had, who's yeah. basically opened up for me that musically I can do what I want, mm. and I've you know, and I'm I produce and kind of write like the demos and write the songs for for all of us and everyone kind of works together to get the stuff together but it's i wasn't really thinking about how far i could actually take it until you know bex comes in and says well why don't you do this and then danny starts going oh that's a cool idea why don't you start doing that like bex is right when you start doing this i really want to have this bit happen ben's going like, yeah i'm up for this too and suddenly i'm getting all these ideas and and this freedom to be as creatively expressive as possible so if i didn't have this family i wouldn't be putting together the horrible noises that i <laughs> that i sent to the guys like i think at least like four or five times a, a, like a week <laughs> i love it um guys this has been probably the most wholesome episode of the podcast i've ever done so thank you so much for coming on thank you um, so much you. Um, thank and, you. and genuinely thank you for like as, as when you're saying how much you put your work and stuff into this like we yeah. would be able to do yeah. what we do about people like you so we thank are so you. thankful for all the podcasts the media everyone who kind of helps get up like artists who are kind of struggling you know to be heard there's like just out yeah. there thank you so much for having us and you know what? I, I kind of, it, it's a it's a thing that I try and do, right? So I when I get offered the massive bands who have massive followings, I'm like, yeah, obviously I'm going to take But you know what? The ones that normally do well are the underground because everyone's heard X band who fucking massive talk about things all the time. What people really want is something new and something fresh. And I think that's what Trevor Ghost is, is bringing something new and something fresh. So keep smashing it. Ladies and gents, this has been Tribes of Ghosts on the Nevermind Poly Podcast with Adam and Becky and me. Lovely job. We will see you next time. Thank you, Peace man. Peace and love. See you later, everyone. See you later. Bye. Peace and love. Bye. Bye.